Good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the last academic session for this uh, summer school on uh, HPC for climate and weather. Uh, my name is Alberto Madonna. I am a software engineer at CSCS, the Swiss National Supercomputing Center. And I've been working for the last few years on uh, applying container technologies to HPC environments. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about containers and, and Docker. So containers are uh, a technology which brings several advantages to the way applications can be uh, packaged and deployed on a variety of different systems. Um, so, um, uh, and, and, this, and these advantages are even greater when applied to very complex software stacks uh, for example, those that we may find very easily in uh, in the domain of climate, climate and weather sciences, the climate and weather disciplines. So that is the context, that, that is the reason why th this lecture is featured as part of the summer school. Um, okay. I will start with uh, an introduction to the essential concepts about containers and Docker. Uh, I will then show you show a tutorial or a live demo uh, presenting presenting live the, um, uh, the the features of Docker, the basic functionalities, what we can do with it to have uh, and, and, and to use it uh, in its most essential but still very useful form. And then uh, I will conclude the, the presentation with a, with a brief overview of containers in HPC. We will have our break and uh, around 3 p.m. more or less. Uh, and then we will come back uh, at 3.30 for the self-paced lab session. Uh, all the slides and the code that you will be using for the lab session are available at uh, this GitHub repository. And also from the, uh, there are links also on the school website. Um, I will, uh, uh, th this, uh, the presentation is pretty packed. There are a lot of things that I would like to show you. So I will do my best to leave some time during either during your presentation or at the end to answer your questions. Um, if I'm not able to make it, I will still be here uh, all during the lab session to address any questions you, you might have. So uh, let's get into it and start. And the first question that we have to answer uh, is what is a container? What are, what are we talking about? So uh, containers are different things to different people. They can be defined in several different ways. And, and depending on who you ask, uh, especially if this person has a technical background on, on, on the subject, you, you may easily get different answers. From the point of view of an end user or an application developer, and so for, from, from a perspective of, of this lecture, we can define containers as isolated environments where uh, we can run applications and services. The contents of these environments uh, uh, are derived, come from images which include all the software dependencies required to run th those applications. Containers are prescriptive, they're portable, they're easy to build and quick to deploy. So from these three points, uh, the description that I'm giving does not seem very different from a virtual machine. Um, and indeed, uh, as far um, from, from the point of view of having a, a virtualized environment, so from the perspective of the end user or an application, there is not a lot of difference. Uh, uh, but in reality, the um, the, the technical difference uh, is quite um, is quite consistent, and 
the diagram here on the bottom of the slides can help us explain and can help us understand it a little bit better. So with a virtual machine, uh, on top of, you use a hypervisor to control the machines and on top of those you have a layer of virtualized hardware and then you have a full operating system like uh, also including a virtualized kernel. And containers have none of those things. With containers, the hardware and the operating system kernel are shared with the host system and the container just runs the applications on, on top of those. So this makes container use a lot less resources compared to a virtual machine resources in terms, for example, of memory, CPU cycles, and they are much quicker to start up because there is no provisioning, no boot up procedure or shutdown procedure. So for these reasons, they sometimes they are also, uh, containers are, are also described as lightweight virtualization technologies. Uh, on the other hand, um, with containers, you do not have the flexibility of running a different kernel from the ones you have on the host or uh, simulate hardware, which is something that virtual machines can, uh, uh, can enable you to do. Um, Let's get a little bit, uh, let's make a step back and return to the definition that I gave you to containers. So there are two fundamental concepts at play here. Uh, one obviously is containers and the other one is the concept of an image. It is very important to understand uh, what those terms mean and how those concepts what is the relationship between those uh, those uh, concepts, uh, and how do they uh, and how do they work to enable us to create these uh, these isolated environments? So let's see those two those two terms in more detail. So uh, an image is defined as a standalone executable package that includes everything needed to run a piece of software. This might be this will be the application code the runtime libraries, shared libraries, or e and even configuration files. An image provides the file system and the metadata like environment variables for a container. On the other hand, a container is a process which is isolated from the rest of the system through abstractions created by the operating system. Uh, the, um, the level of this isolation can be controlled so containers can selectively access parts of the host system. Uh, and the file system of the container comes from an image. A more intuitive way to think about this relationship, if you will, uh, is that a container is the runtime instance of an image. So what the image becomes in memory when it is executed. So you can think of, of the image as this immutable reference and the containers are just processes which, uh, which start in a context defined by the image. Um, it's worth, uh, it's uh, worth noting the last part of this sentence regarding the container, that they are created uh, by abstraction of the operating system. Containers are an operating system level of virtualization. It is the operating system that enables us to create containers and the features of a container are tied to the operating system. So in the scope of, uh, in the, uh, in the scope of this lecture, I will be referring more specifically to Linux containers. In Linux, the features that allow us to create containers are called namespaces and they are implemented directly in the Linux kernel. So if you're interested in going a little bit more technical to understand namespaces, how they work and how they can be used to create containers, I recommend, uh, I really recommend you this series of articles from the Linux Weekly News website. Uh, it is a bit of a, a deep dive, a technical deep dive, but it's very insightful. So the important thing to note here is that since they depend on kernel technologies, 
containers are not an exclusive invention of any group, organization, or company. Rather, everyone is just reusing <coughs> the building blocks made available by Linux. However, these building blocks are uh, rather low level. And so there, there is a lot of ways they can be combined between them to form, a, to, form a, to form a technological implementation. And so different design decisions and use cases gave the rise to a, a number of different container solutions. Uh, for example, here in the left part of the slide, we have more general purpose container implementations, uh, LXC, Rocket, Podman, Docker. And here on the right side, we also have a handful of more HPC focused container solutions like Shifter, Singularity, Charlie Cloud, and Saros. Um, I'll be talking a little bit more about HPC specific software towards the end of this presentation. So for now, let's just, let's just focus our attention on Docker. So Docker is an extremely popular container implementation. Uh, it can legitimately <clears throat> be defined as basically a de facto standard when using containers. Uh, the popularity of Docker is such that some people even use Docker as synonymous with containers, even if, as we just said, that's not entirely appropriate. There are many reasons for the success of Docker. And here I, I would like to highlight two of them that in my opinion make a difference from, uh, from the perspective of the user. The first one is uh, the easy to use authoring tools. And I'm referring to image authoring tools. So container images are created from recipe-like files which essentially are not that different from shell scripts. And then images can be named, they can be labeled, uh, and, and then can be built on top of other images. So there is a lot of flexibility, a lot of chance to, of combining and reusing uh, material. The second, uh, the second aspect of Docker uh, that I would like to highlight here is the cloud-based image distribution strategy. So there are there, there are um, several uh, remote platforms on the cloud which are called registries, which can store and redistribute images. Uh, and the Docker client out of the box can authenticate and exchange data with these registries. So it's very, very easy to share the images and, and share whatever work uh, uh, or a piece of software that you have packaged that you have packaged uh, around with with someone else just by connecting with these uh, to these registries docker proposes uh, a workflow which in its most basic form can be represented in can be summarized in three steps the first one an image is created from a Docker file, which is the recipe file I, I just ma I mentioned before. So, and, and this process can happen pretty much anywhere. It can be a, a personal computer, it can be a laptop or your workstation. The, uh, once the image is ready, it can be uploaded or pushed, if you want to use the, the, the jargon of Docker, it can be pushed to a remote registry. The default one used by Docker is called Docker Hub, which is the largest public uh, image registry around and is maintained directly by the Docker company. In the third step, uh, on, uh, the image is downloaded or pulled on a different computer, on a target machine, and then used to run a container. And this, this second computer can be a, a team member can be an application end user, or it can even be a, a server in a data center. Um, so uh, this all looks very theoretical in the way uh, I, I, so far I, I've spoken about the, the, the concepts about the container, the image, 
what's the workflow that Docker proposes. But in more practical terms, uh, how are containers useful? What are the advantages? Um, well, containers are interesting because they give us the possibility to create applications, and in our case, in, in our interest, scientific applications, which are portable, they are prescript, they are prescriptive, easy to deploy, and easy to test. Uh, let me explain in, in more detail each of these points. Um, applications uh, are can be port uh, or rather applications packaged in containers are portable because the images are self-sufficient. An image is everything that is required to run a containerized application in a way that is largely independent from the underlying host environment. Um, and since each application is shipped with its dedicated dependencies, uh, containers can help us uh, avoid dependency conflicts or those situations where um, different applications on a system uh, require different version of the same library, of the same shared library. And this of, uh, usually is the, uh, is the cause of many headaches uh, on multi-tenant systems. Uh, uh, containers are prescriptive in the sense of self-documenting. Uh, because when we create, uh, images are created from these recipe files called Docker files, which specify uh, all, um, all, the, all the components that make up a software stack and, and also specify how that software stack was put together. So when we create an image, we already have a piece of code in the Docker file because the Docker files are code and can be version controlled as such. They can be checked in, in Git repositories or uh, embedded uh, with the with with the application source code. We have this piece of code which contains all the details about how to recreate and how to reassemble a given software stack, however complex this may be. So this reduces the risk of someone, for example, figuring out how to make a, a piece of software work. Then this person leaves the team for whatever reason and then, and then suddenly nobody else knows how to make that stuff work anymore. But if we have uh, a container image or a, do a Docker image in, in our specific case, um, we, have already, uh, we have already documented it just by creating the Docker file. Containers are easy to deploy uh, because once again, the image is all that is needed. I just have to pull the image from a registry and I am good to go. There's no boot up, no provisioning. It, it starts, uh, the container and the application starts in a, in a matter of seconds. And finally, the last point, easy to test. Um, what do I mean with this? It's not because something happens uh, to the application, to the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the actual application itself, but Think about, think about the possibility, uh, or rather, think about having an image with all your application dependencies already compiled and installed, and to use that image as a test bed. This opens up the possibility of having a test environment that is completely clean every time, completely clean of uh, build artifacts, test artifacts that, that can alter the way the build happens or the test happens uh, with predictable contents. You have no need to rebuild any, uh, any shared library, any dependency, and it starts in a matter of seconds. Um, you, you just have to import your application code from the host and you then start to build and test your application right away. So it, it can really, cut down the time and effort that you usually are spent to create and maintain test environments um, 
for for example, those that you will use on 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 a CI pipeline, on a continuous integration pipeline, on on regular testing of your commits. Um, in the, in this sense, containers can also help us uh, prevent the the so-called works on my computer problem. So those situations where uh, at, uh, an application or a software only works on the on the computer of a single team member because I don't know maybe this person installed some software or configured some software in some way that magically makes things work work but this person uh, can doesn't remember or doesn't know exactly what he did well when using containers everyone gets a uniform test environment so that helps a lot with the reproducibility of problems um okay so but uh enough slides for now um i will then move on to the live demo so we can show we can see docker in action we can see containers in action and understand a little bit better how they work and what and what they can do <laughs> 